Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures. Well, my computer's in the shop, so I had to do everything longhand today. And I hope I can read my writing. It's something I discovered in doing it longhand was that I seem to get more out of the lesson. And that reminded me of years and years ago when I used to write with my feet in the old-fashioned stove. My feet were in the oven on cold, wintry days, and it was so cold that I couldn't even function barely. So I would put my feet in the oven and sit on the chair and I would write. And somehow the anointing of God seemed to go through me and flow through me even more than it does now on the keyboard. A lot to be said in that. And our subject today is Love Lifts Us Up. When you are sinking in mire and no one is there for you, God lifts you up out of it and rescues you. God's love is beautiful, a beautiful gift to us. It is because of His love that we could love others. God's love is eternal. Earthly love is not. True love is selfless. I'm a little froggy today because I've been eating ice cream and cheese at a potluck luncheon. And it uh, messed me up. Love is one of the attributes of God and an essential part of his nature. Even before he created us, when we were still on his mind, he knew we would have heartaches as humans, and he planned to give us tear ducts so that we could shed tears to get a release from our pain. That is love. It would be impossible to count all of his acts of love toward us. God commands us to love him with our heart, soul, and mind. And after that, he calls us to love our neighbor as ourself, ourselves. Everything in life follows suit after these two things. Love is powerful and can affect a person instantly, even faster than medicine. It is so powerful that when God is in it, love can heal years and years of emotional scars instantaneously. What happens when we walk inside a church? Usually you can feel love. I did the first time I walked into my church many years ago. This love isn't a common love, like I love ice cream or I love coffee. That love for food comes from my head and not from my heart. This love is deep and meaningful, the love we're talking about today. When one of my sons puts his arms around me and tells me he loves me, that love enlarges my heart and transforms me. And here's quite a statement. People search for love more than they search for anything else in this life. It's because of the emptiness in the souls of men. And this was something going through my mind. Have you ever wondered how the expression falling in love came about? To me, falling denotes losing control. Do you think that's indicative of taking a risk to fall in love? I just thought it was something to think about. For 40 years since I've been saved, I've been told thousands of times by my brethren that they love me and their words have been wonderful to hear. But even casual friends today exchange the term, love you, love you, and often these words are from the surface. When love comes from deep within someone's heart, it penetrates. It's the kind of expression that stays with you for a lifetime. Last month I had lunch with an old friend whom I had not seen in over 20 years. As we parted, she put her hand on my arm and said, I love you, Betty Jean. Not only, not only did a supernatural love emanate from her, she transferred the love of God through the Holy Spirit into my soul. You know what I'm talking about. It was like when the woman tried to get Jesus. She tried to get to him through the crowd, but the crowd was so large that all she could do was grab the hem of his garment. And even though the crowds were pushing against Jesus, 
He felt virtue go out of him, and he knew that someone had touched him. That's how powerful my friend's love was, her touch, that day. I'll never forget it. And I remember when my Cuban husband called me on the phone after he proposed to me. He said, Yo te amo, which means I love you in Spanish. To me, the words meant even more than I love you in English, perhaps because of the familiarity of the term. His words to me were so powerful that they penetrated all the way to my soul. I could tell you exactly where I was when he spoke them to me. God's love expands time and space. We as humans are blessed that God gave us the capacity to experience love. There are so many degrees of love. Listen to this story of deep love and devotion. Oh, before I share this one, <clears throat> I just saw on TV this morning after the tornado in Indiana a couple of days ago. This lady threw herself on her two children to save them. And in doing so, she lost the parts of both legs. And that is true love. It's the type of love that you don't stop and think what kind of damage you're going to incur. You just act without thinking to protect those you love. And that's the kind of love that Jesus had for us. In Jewish history, <clears throat> the Romans attacked the Jews in, in their temple, their holy place. Try to picture this. While they were worshiping God, according to history, those in the service of the Lord at the time would not discontinue worshiping and making their offerings to God, even though they were under attack and their lives were in danger. They were focused on God and nothing else mattered. Their love for God was deep and true. That really touched my heart to read that. Have you ever been so low that you thought you would die from heartbreak? Doesn't it seem like when you are in places like that, someone comes along and allows you to vent, which takes the weight off your shoulders? God and his angels are behind, setting up those times of venting. And God is ministering his love to you, to us, during those times. I remember uh, a few weeks ago, I wasn't suffering from heartache, but I was just hurting, my heart was hurt, and God sent my friend Emily from way out country to come down and visit me, and there was someone healing in that for me. I didn't ask God to do that. He did it because of his love for me, and you have stories too, I know you do. God's heart is a heart of love, and he has such love for his children that he taught us in the Ten Commandments to treat each other with love and respect. Love was the basis of all the commandments. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. There are so many more verses in the Bible. Dozens. Make time to go to your concordance and look up some of those verses. Write some down. Put them on your refrigerator and <clears throat> pass them along to your family members. In real and practical terms, there have been and will continue to be thousands of episodes of love, great and small, in our lives. In the Old Testament, love was expressed in God blessing Sarah with a child in her old age. It may have been Joseph as a young boy in the book of Genesis, giving his father his favorite baby lamb to sacrifice to God. It was God blessing Hannah with a child after she was scorned for so long because she was childless. It was God bestowing riches on Solomon. It was God sending Jeremiah a scribe to help him in his work when he felt so lonely in the New Testament, it was God sending Jesus to come to earth to redeem us from a terrible fate. I saw something going by. I thought it was a police car, a policeman rather. 
Oh, wait, let me do that one again. <clears throat> in the New Testament, it was God sending Jesus to come to earth to redeem us from a terrible fate by taking our sins upon himself. God's love. It was the beautiful mother and father that God gave to Jesus. Mary and Joseph. It was Jesus raising Lazarus, the cousin whom he loved, from the dead. It was Jesus giving sight to the blind. It was Jesus raising a little girl from the dead. It was Jesus feeding the 5,000. He didn't just feed a multitude of people to score points for himself. He genuinely identified with each one of the people there. There they were, far away from the towns, and they were hungry. Maybe they were getting tired and weak. They needed nourishment, and he provided for them in his great love. In our day, it might be someone doing something sacrificial, like donating a kidney to a loved one to save a person's life. It might be a busy mom coming to her child's rescue and driving him to school when he oversleeps and misses the school bus. It might be a neighbor buying someone groceries when they are out of work. It may be a parent helping their kids to buy their first home when they can't do it on their own. It might be a church worker visiting an elderly person in a nursing home. What does an act of love like that do to the recipients? The words thank you can't touch their gratitude. It goes to their heart and soul. How could the starving people of the world say thank you to those that interrupt their lives sacrificially at a tremendous monetary cost to go to their country to feed them? That kind of love soothes the heart and gives them renewed hope. It is a powerful God-given love. There is healing in expressions of love. To be loved by another human being is beautiful. A parent's love for the children is so penetrating it cannot be described. Neither can the love between a man and woman. I think I'm going to skip over into the last page <clears throat> and then get back to that. So I was just reading something last night and this morning. It's in uh, Song of Solomon. And she kisses him. Hold on. I may have to wait until later because I I don't know where all the all the reminders I have are stacked in here someplace. But yeah, if you want to follow along with me, you can get your Bibles ready to Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 2, starting at verse 2. Okay, so we were talking about the love between a man and a woman. We're just going to describe it beautifully to you. There is a vast difference between love and infatuation. Unfortunately, even though adults realize this, they very often do not have the power over their lovesick emotions to stay clear of infatuation. Love grows. Sometimes we don't like someone when we meet them and start to get to know them, but then after we work with them for a few months or attend meetings with them for a few months, or fellowship at church with them for a few months, they start to grow on us and we on them. We begin to see positive things and special things about them. After more time goes by, even years, and especially if you have closeness with the person, your like turns to love. That's why it's not good to trust in first impressions. Love gives, love gives coherence to all of life and existence. Stop and digest that. I'm going to read it again. Love gives coherence to all of life and existence. We have to let God love us before we can love others. A love that all Christians should ask for is a baptism in God's love. It is the deepest kind of love which allows one to love even the cruelest of sinners with God's love. To bask in Jesus' love is to treat your soul. Perfect love casts out fear. 
Never think outside of love. Love covers transgressions. Who shall be able to separate us from the love of God? Neither death, nor life, nor height, nor depth. In Ezekiel 16.8, there is a time for love. My favorite verse. We should all practice unconditional love. If we're going to love, we may as well go all the way in love unconditionally. Corey Ten Boom said, Loving God and loving people is an unbeatable combination. Jesus' love for us is what held him to the cross. Wow. Wow, I love that. And here's that list. Here is the list in Song of Solomon. What verses to share? So, chapter 1, verse 2, I thought was really interesting. We're going to detour just a tiny bit from love just for this one verse, part of it. It's amplified, so it's going to be a little longer than the usual verses. Let me kiss him with the kisses of his mouth, she cries. Then realizing that Solomon has arrived and has heard her speech, she turns to him and adds, For your love is better than wine. Now you know what I just picked up for the first time in 40 years when I read this a couple of nights ago, and then again last night and this morning. In the first part of the verse it says, Let him kiss me. She refers to her lover as him. Let him kiss me. In the second part of the verse, she refers to him personally, in a personal way. For your love is better than mine. Him and then your. I never picked up on that. So, the, the teaching behind this is, something happened, or there was some time spent between part A and part B. What happened between part A and part B? It tells it in the Amplified and it says, in parentheses, she cries. Then realizing that Solomon has arrived, that's the something that happened. First, she was talking about him before he was in her presence. And then, this transpired, he came into her presence and then she spoke to him directly. Then realizing that Solomon has arrived and has heard her speech, he overheard her. She turns to him and adds, end of parentheses, for your love is better than wine. Isn't that interesting? Well, you know what else it's a reminder of to me? It's a reminder that we can't privately interpret the scriptures. That's why God gave us a pastor teacher that he anointed with his Holy Spirit to pass on the interpretation to us. And that's why there's so many interpretations out there today and people are not experiencing unity. So I'd love to have you go to that verse, uh, chapter, Song of Solomon chapter 1, verse 2, um, later on after the show, and just read it for yourself. All right, and then uh, to verse 6. This is a true love story that God intends for his son and us, born again Christians. And it's also a love story that God intends for couples. God, godly arranged couples. And this is um, the girl talking, the female talking. Please do not look at me, she said, for I am swarthy. I have worked out in the sun and it has made its mark on me. So, to me that would mean that she would be, well, she would want to look pretty for the one that her heart desired. That's how I would want to look. Not all sweaty from working out or something. And then in 13, verse 13, <clears throat> she says, and, and concentrate on this and, and get a hold of this, the heart that it's coming from. My beloved shepherd, my beloved is to me like a scent, a smell scent, bag of myrrh that lies in my bosom. Verse 14, My beloved shepherd is to me a cluster of henna, flowers, 
in the vineyards of Engedi, famed for its fragrant shrubs. Oh, can you just close your eyes and imagine the smell of henna? Into her, that's what her beloved was like. Verse 15, Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. You have dove's eyes. Wow. Verse 16, a female. She cried, Behold, you are beautiful, my beloved shepherd. Yes, delightful. Our arbor and couch are green and leafy. And in chapter 2, starting at verse 1, it's a female part. She said, I am only a little rose or autumn crocus of the plain of Sharon, or a humble lily of the valleys that grows, of the valleys, in parentheses, that grows in deep and difficult places. And then he says, to respond to her, but Solomon replied, like the lily among thorns. How would you like your lover to say that to you? If you said, I'm just like a small lily, and he came back and said to you, like a lily among thorns, wouldn't that just make your day? Like a lily among thorns, so are you, my love, among the daughters. Beautiful. And she says, like an apple tree among the trees of the wood. That could mean the trees of the forest. So is my beloved shepherd among the sons, cried the girl. Under his shadow I delighted to sit, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. If you were the guy of the couple, how would you feel if the, if the woman said to you, and spoke to you that way, from her heart? Make your day. Verse 4, she again, <clears throat> He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. For love waved as a protecting and comforting banner over my head when I was near him. And this verse is also been interpreted to mean Jesus bringing us to the banqueting house, which is the body of Jesus Christ here on earth. And he brings us, when we receive him into our heart to be Lord of our lives, he brings us to that place and covers us, us with a banner of love in the body. Um, verse 5, she's speaking. Sustain me with raisins. Refresh me with apples, <clears throat> for I am sick with love. Oh, she's totally in love. It's a wonderful feeling. Just like uh, when a woman is pregnant with a baby, she just glows. Well, that's how it is when, when a female has a love for her um, bow. And it shows on her face. And that reminds me on Facebook this week. A friend from the body of Christ in Baltimore who's overseas now and married, I believe, a Russian girl. Uh, his name is Peter. He's from Maine. They uh, posted some wedding pictures on Facebook. And one of them was her alone. They were together in most of them. And then one was her alone. And then one was him alone. And I, I made a comment on his post. I said, you look like a new groom. A new groom with that love and radiance on his face. Let's see. This is me. Uh, verse 6 is uh, female speaking. <clears throat> Here we go. I I lost track of time. Verse 6. <clears throat> I can feel his left hand under my head, and his right hand embraces me. Ah, sweetness for Um, Seven. This is he. He said, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles, or by the hinds of the field, which are free to follow their own instincts, that you not try to stir up or awaken my love until it pleases. I think that we go back to Ezekiel, what we read before, about a time for love. Uh, verse 8, the female, vividly she pictured it, the voice of my beloved shepherd. Behold, he comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. 
9, also she, my beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart. Behold, he stands behind the wall of our house. He looks in through the windows, he glances through the lattice. Just a few more, and then in verse 10 he speaks. My beloved speaks and says to me, I love this, rise up my, rise up my love, my fair one, and come away. 11. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. 12. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of the birds has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop there because of time. But uh, you go, go ahead and finish the whole chapter at, at home. Well, it's just beautiful. John 15:13. No one has greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. Love is an action, not just a feeling. God's constant motivation is love. In this is love, not that we first loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Love always wins. Love is always just beyond our reach. And I hope I can squeeze squeeze this in from Matthew 5, 43 to 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your en enemy, Jesus speaking. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. I'm afraid to read the rest. I don't want to run out of time. And he also said by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love, have love for one another. Telling somebody that you're praying for them or that you will pray for them. Give them a short visit, listening ear, even a smile will cause someone to feel love. I had another story, but I'll give it to you next time. Thanks for watching. God bless you and God bless yours. God keep you and God keep yours. Till next time. Bye-bye. Yo te amo. Hey, everybody.